Season 3, Episode 5 of From gave us some pretty concrete proof that nothing is predictable, nothing is as it seems. The townspeople are idiots, pure buffoons, and Fatima and Ellis are probably the most annoying couple to ever exist. So for starters, it, it begins with everyone hearing about the re-arrival of Tabitha as well as Victor's dad, dad who decided to tag along with her to Frumville. And Victor is told this news and he's excited that Tabitha's returned, but upon hearing that his dad's returned, once Donna tells him, he acts like he's seen a ghost and then runs off like a scared little kid. And we get to see how the townspeople are reacting to this information of Tabitha actually coming back because they all presumed her to be dead and she eventually goes to the Donner to tell them all what happened. And that leads us to what has to be the most infuriating part of this show ever. Topping Ethan running outside multiple times at night for stupid dumbass reasons. This takes the dumbass cake. Tabitha explains to everybody in the Donner, the, all the townspeople, they have a town meeting where, where we think they're going to start discussing what they've all seen, trying to piece the puzzle together. But no, she tells them her experience. You would think that they would take that information and be like, hmm, what could we do with this to help us all get out of here? How could we put our noggins together to solve this? But no, they start, they turn into an angry mob. They get their pitchforks and torches out and start yelling at her in the Donner, acting like it's her fault. She should have went and called the cops or got someone to help them. They know that they probably wouldn't believe her, but what if they did? And Fatima is by far my least favorite character now. Just on top of her not telling anybody about the weird-ass behavior she's been having while pregnant, she just yelled at Tabitha, telling her she should have told the police. Just, even though it sounds unbelievable and nobody believed the circumstances they were in when they first entered the town, she should have told someone because what if they believed her? Then they could have got help to the town, even though you can't find the town because the town doesn't really exist and it only pulls people into the town that it wants to be in the town, but the, she could have got help. You were Did out we, there we, in the real world where people can help. How could you not take advantage of that? Yeah, they may have thought you were crazy, but what if they didn't? But really the part I can't get over about this episode, like I said, is the town meeting. Fatima just literally acts like a bitch, like, like a Karen who's mad about her Starbucks order being wrong. That part of the episode just gets under my skin so bad. It's really what made me want to make a full video about this episode, is just how the townspeople reacted to Tabitha telling them her story at their little meeting they had. People who have all experienced the same thing that Tabitha has, knowing how unbelievable it sounds, they themselves not believing their circumstances when they first entered the town, but somehow she was supposed to get someone to not only believe her, not lock her up in a lunatic asylum for saying this kind of stuff, and then help her find Frumville, and then get help to them and get all of them out of Frumville. Like, let's say Devil's Advocate, Luckiest case scenario, she does get someone to believe her, takes them, somehow finds the town, they just drive and end up coming across the tree. What then? You've just got more people trapped in, in Frumville, and that means you're even more screwed because of like the rationing and stuff going on. You're just, they don't need more people in the town. But of course, human nature strikes again. Humans are stupid. We all know this. This is nothing new. This should not be surprising at all. And I think Jade's quote about the meeting pretty much just sums up the whole thing. One thing you learn when you're older, any meeting with more than three people is basically pointless. And I guess it's worth mentioning all the subplots that are going on in the background, like how Julie and Elgin smoked weed that I don't know how the hell they got to ease their pains. Randall is recovering from having half of his face ripped off by the monsters. And then Victor has a wholesome, damn near made me shed a tear reunion with his dad. But of course, since the townspeople now have this knowledge that there is this tree that takes the, an exit tree, basically. They, they see an exit sign. That's all they really hear. They don't know what, how the trees really work or anything. They just want to go through it now so they can have their chance to escape. But Jade ends up convincing Tabitha to take him to the tree so he can see what's going on. And they start opening these bottles, like the, the messages in the bottles. And it's just random four-letter numbers, which they say could be dates. But one of them is like 2650-something, which obviously, unless that's very far in the future, a future, future, future cycle of the Frumville 
then that's it's not a date which i did see someone uh my girlfriend told me that someone had a very interesting theory on the subreddit about how victor's dad points out there's a motel, a motel sign but no motel in the episode which is crazy i never even put that together like there's a sign for a motel but no motel in the entire town. But the theory was that the numbers could be related to like room numbers in this hotel, somehow correlating to the houses and whatnot in the town. I don't know, it's, it's a theory, but yeah, unexplainable numbers written on paper inside of bottles, that's what's connected to the bottle tree. But of course, since the townspeople now know that it's possible to escape, they wanna get out by any means necessary. They'll do whatever it takes. So Dell, dumbass Dell, followed them to the bottle tree where um, he says he's gonna go through because someone has to do it, right? And he's honestly just being a giant ass the whole time talking to them at the tree. And then he decides to go through the tree, which takes him back to the town and doesn't actually take him out to the lighthouse like it did Tabitha. He ends up in the pool, but not in the way you might think. He's not sitting on a pool floaty, floating around, sipping a martini. He's in the wall of the pool. He's in he's entombed in concrete with just his face, like part of his face and hand and leg sticking out of the pool wall. Which I gotta say, amazing visual effects on that. Like, I, I, it looks fucking awesome. It's, it's, it looks awesome in a gruesome, gory way, which is fantastic. And the actor that plays Boyd, Harold Perrineau, however you pronounce his last name, I definitely butcher that. He does act his ass off in this scene particularly, like obviously all the acting is good in this show, but him giving the speech in the pool is, uh, you, that, that really came from his soul. And I think this episode gives us a lot in terms of uh, fuel for theories, mainly in the sense that the, the trees aren't really, they don't take you to one specific location. It appears that all of the faraway trees are just random you know there's not a specific place you get taken to by going through a specific tree and there is also another theory i've seen that says uh it could basically like your intentions could uh dictate where you go through the faraway trees like if your intentions aren't pure then it's going to send you to a bad place or if you're doing it for a good reason then you actually are going to get to like where you want to go or whatever i don't know which way i believe i think the town kind of picks and chooses where it wants to place people like pawns on a chessboard almost just moving them where they want them to go and i feel like the tree wanted to prove a point to instill more fear because uh, as we've heard in the show the forest feeds on fear or hope and i think this is the town's way of flipping them the middle finger and saying i have all the power i hold all the cards and just taking away some more of that hope that they have because they got their hopes up with hearing that their the bottle tree takes them to a potential exit and now they know no that's not the case and i'm very curious to see where episode six goes i think some big questions are going to get answered by the end of this season or at least i hope they do if, if big questions don't get answered at the end of season three, it's definitely, the, the show's going to feel like it's dragging out too long, and I hope that's not the direction they go. I hope they know where they're going with it. And I'm crossing my fingers that the riders aren't as lost as the viewers are. But other than that, I'll catch you in the next one.